Hello everyone and welcome to Open EXO Live. It is really great uh, to be with you uh, this uh, afternoon for me or evening for you perhaps, or maybe it's early morning. Uh, we have Zahira with us who is coming live from Mumbai and you can see there some uh, awesome community members coming up in the next couple of weeks. And before we get uh, Zahira up onto the screen, I did want to just share a few uh, co uh, comments and 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 uh, from our community. Uh, I've just been distracted here by uh, Suman just saying, "Go Zahira, uh, rock the show!" Uh, thanks, Suman. Great to have you here. And so, let me just share these few um, messages from some of our community members. And the first one comes from Jyoti. He just says. I feel fortunate and blessed to have Zahira as my co-founder and partner at White Spaces over the past decade and more. She brings stability and uh, solidity to our coaching and consulting practice with her strong sense of ownership for outcomes or closure. Whilst embodying customer first, that's remark what's remarkable about Zahira is her boundless bounce back ability through rough and high seas navigating dependably through choppy, often shark-infested waters with nerves of steel. Zahira is courageous in surfacing difficult conversations, regularly calling out the elephant in the room, and then deftly steering towards a constructive way forward with desired outcomes. Lastly, and by no means least, Zahira has a heart of pure gold, overflowing with kindness and compassion, with additional dollops reserved for the underdog. Uh, we then have from Dea, uh, Zahira is a superwoman, always cheerful, always smiling, always giving full attention to things she does. May it be building exponential initiatives, running sprints, being a mother, or, banking, or baking amazing cakes and breads. She is extremely talented, one of the smartest people I know, and a true role model. Next, from Harold, Probably the most exponentially minded woman in Asia, Zahira has a deep understanding of the customer's need and how empathy together with technology can make them thrive. Next, we have from Luca. Zahira is an extremely uh, competent professional, uh, EXO uh, coach, consultant and trainer and a wonderful human being. I had the privilege to work with Zahira during the Sprint Coach Certification Program and I enjoyed so much working together. She has an unraveling passion for the EXO model, and she is always eager to learn, to listen, to ask questions, and to share knowledge with the team. And then lastly from Ian, Zahira is first and foremost a people and leadership developer, including her own. On top of all, she never settles for just getting things in order. She also wants to know what, uh, what it will work for, for everyone, that, is, that, it, that its benefits are maximized, that it can withstand pressure and challenges that are thrown at it, and that possess, uh, processes are put in place that can be continually improved uh, using all the exponential tool systems thinking that are available. I can personally attest to her dynamic teamwork, drive, commitment, and being the best, and her natural leadership abilities under all circumstances. I, always, I would always want a person like Sahira in my leadership and working teams, as she brings a wealth of knowledge, curiousness, reflectivity, inventiveness, attention to detail, and an attractive and infectious climate of warmth, passion, and inclusiveness to all tasks. That was quite a mouthful. So with that, I would love to welcome Zahira up on screen. Zahira, how are you doing today? How is Mumbai? Oh my goodness. Uh, can you imagine after listening to all of that, I can't stop grinning, you know? <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin. That's quite a compilation. 
and quite a mouthful for you to read as well. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so, oh my yeah, it, it, it's it's yeah. really great to have you. It's really great to see some folks uh, on on social media saying hi. So, if you wherever you're watching this, uh, of course, unless you're not watching it live, uh, do do uh, say hi. Write any questions or comments. Uh, we will be looking at those uh, as we go on today. And so, Zahira, we always start by asking. Tell us about yourself. Can, can you share with those who are watching a, a little bit about you, uh, you know, where you come from, what you've done, uh, uh, and, and how you sort of came into uh, the, the Opening XO community? Yeah, sure. Um, so let me, let me talk about, um, you know, myself. I'm a part of White uh, Spaces Consulting, as you know, which is an, you know, an organization and uh, leadership advisory firm. Uh, we, go, we work with three kinds of clients. Uh, you know, the first one is basically family managed, uh, medium to large enterprises, you know, basically around the South Asian region. And uh, it mostly for some of them first gen, but increasingly these days, uh, second gen. We're working with a lot of second gen companies, right? Um, the second kind of companies that we work with is early stage uh, you know, tech uh, companies and tech driven companies, early stage funded, right? Uh, the third kind is that we work with a lot of, uh, you know, authorities in the Middle East, uh, mostly the UAE region. So, uh, so that's where we are. Now, we help clients with organization capacity building and, and uh, leadership alignment, you know, and really, I mean, we know that the two go totally hand in hand, you can't work on one and ignore the other. In fact, earlier in the day, we were in a conversation with another, you know, uh, very uh, big prospect, a huge company. And we were talking about uh, how they want to bring in business process improvements and, and also improve the culture. And uh, we were happy to hear that because it's, it's you know, you, you need to work on both, right? Mm -hmm. uh, very often, some people don't get that. Uh, and ultimately, when you get into such interventions, you realize that, you know, the leadership doesn't understand it or the leadership, you know, uh, refuses to acknowledge uh, and true change can come only when the leadership is willing to listen, uh, change, you know, unlearn uh, and move forward. We have a saying, you know, the fish rots from the head. And we've seen this, like I said, uh, you know, playing out in organizations because it, it you know, inadvertently leadership uh is part of the problem so we help companies uh, to you know we basically show the mirror to the companies and and uh, you know ask them to reflect and then build in interventions for this now in the context of uh, you know organizations today where do we come in we come in in the context of today and in the context of tomorrow the context of today is basically we work we work on the hard and the soft now what is the hard the heart is basically helping them to improve business performance, right? And there we come in and help them put, you know, metrics in place. Uh, and we try to bring in this whole, uh, you know, uh, religion of rigorous reviews, which is which is very important because uh, if you don't, uh, you know, you have to measure it uh, if you want it to get better. Otherwise, you don't know which way the needle is moving. So we help them to do that. Uh, with respect to the softer part, we basically... Uh, come in and help organizations to have a more collaborative approach to po uh, problem solving, uh, you know, while taking into account their culture, their values, and of course, the big one, the purpose, you know, what drives them, what, what, what is the binding glue. So we help facilitate a lot of conversations around, around that, right? Um, post adopting the EXO methodology, you know, we at White Spaces are all in this whole space of, uh, you know, um, helping organizations to grab opportunities looking into tomorrow and helping them to build organizations, you know, thinking scale and thinking big. So that's that's typically um, what we do at White Spaces Consulting. Uh, your second part of the question was about uh, my EXO journey. And that's some journey. So, um, you know, my mentor and business partner, Jyoti, initially, uh, you know, kind of got introduced to this concept. Uh, okay. And then he couldn't stop talking about it. Um, 
the conversations that followed from day on was was just you know exponential and abundance and and you know 10x and and oh my goodness you know he just went on and on uh at that uh, point i was very busy in the most uh, you know in a business mastery course and i had some exams coming up so, and i didn't want to get distracted and in my head i was like oh this is just another fad you know it will pass but it did not <laughs> so i said okay uh, there must be something to it you know because he, he, and and by then he had completed the the uh, exo consultant course so yeah. i said okay you know we yeah. need some common ground to talk about because when you when you go to market you you have to be on the same page uh, so yeah. i went back yeah. i read the book and then i started i immersed myself in the exo platform you know i saw to myself that all of this bloody makes sense you know then i i got enrolled in the exo foundation course um so i started with that um and then again of course following that our conversations went even deeper and cantered around you know oh how can we bring exo to market here in india you know um how can we serve our clients better so then i went on and did my exo trainer and exo consultant course right um and i started beginning seeing value you know i i saw already the difference it was making to me in the kind of conversations i was now having having with a prospects and with our clients right uh, they say that you know what what you read about and what you speak about and what you think about is is somewhere influencing you and and i saw that beginning to happen with me right uh, so that happened and i i got busy with you know with life and and you know clients and all of that then jodi landed the big sprint in india right the, the 1 billion textile major uh, which which is you know uh, the we've talked about it a lot in the open exo platform mm. uh, and then you know just watching a dream team in action suman dia dago trend deepak uh, and then also working in the in the look at deepak synchronicity <laughs> yeah uh, talking, and and then you know uh, pile and myself pile is is uh, has also completed a exo consultant course and she is you know very enterprising and all of that so both of us were helping at the at the back end uh as we got deeper into the platform and you know uh, you know interacting with the exo community uh you know i thought oh my god you know this is this is really like becoming a, like an addiction i need to get deeper into it so and that's when i got into the exo coach right so mm. exo coach happened and uh, and then there was no looking back you know uh, it just it just uh, it's been a beautiful journey and i i tell you i must thank my wonderful teachers yaroslav and dia for just you know the whole um, the teaching methodology the reflective yeah. thinking you know yeah. not not dumbing down totally uh, you know uh, being mindful of where you come from um, amazing i mean i've enjoyed having them as my teachers and i can't forget uh, anastasia and avier you know just helping at the back end any time anything you know the turn around time oh my goodness you know uh, amazing <laughs> it's been it's been very interesting working with them so um awesome. so yeah so and, and and a shout out to my cohort all of my cohorts be be the you know trainer be the consultant be the be the uh, exo coach and you have some of them as you know talking uh, out there as testimonials so i've had a wonderful time you know Uh, awesome. awesome and, and awesome. zahira i mean it's yeah it's it's really great to to hear that and and hopefully the team are watching this and and will definitely share share that with them uh you know we 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 often speak about how you know perhaps once you once you join the community and a lot of people might say we we drink we've drunk some Kool-Aid uh and we we speaking about these things we're a little bit crazy um many many times people you know are saying is 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 this really is this really a, a, an option that we're going to have an abundant future um and and we truly believe it is right and 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 i think you know one thing that's that's so important of course is is the fact that we you know we have a massive transformative purpose about you know transforming the world for a better future and and the exo model itself you know really has has at the core their purpose um and i i love to always you know find out from from the people who are, who i chat to on opening exo live about that about about you know the ntp that's that's inspiring you uh, to to really do do what you do and so uh, yeah would would you would you like to share you know what that is mm. yeah of course 
Uh, so my MTP, it keeps evolving, right? Uh, um, at this present uh, agent stage, it's all about inspiring and supporting leaders um, and organizations to co-elevate. You know, uh, what do I mean by that? It's basically it, leaders elevating themselves as they embark on a journey to scale and, you know, at the same time, elevating their organization sustainably. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. So this whole journey of co-elevation. In fact, um, Simon Sinek, as you know, has popularized uh, this with this whole uh, start with your why, right? Why? I mean, this this whole thing. Of, yeah, yeah. Uh, but even before that, like I remember years ago reading this book, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, uh, who mm -hmm. was in the Nazi concentration camp. And, and so I think he brings out the essence of it. And, and at, at that point, it was so po poignant and it touched me that uh, it is so true, right? It's only, I mean, unless you're driven by something in a passion beyond yourself, you, uh, and he quotes uh, Frederick Nijar in his, in his book where he says that, you know, if you have the will, you can survive anyhow. And that's really how some of the people, you know, managed to uh, get out of the, of that concentration camp. Yeah. So, so, so the empty will, uh, let me tell you a story about my MTP, right? The whole co-elevate mm. thing. Uh, uh, so this is a post -co uh, a pre covid story when i went to the yosemite uh, national park in california um so um i was fascinated to see the sequoia trees like i've been i've been reading about them and seen pictures and i wanted to see them up front and personal and i did and i was blown you know uh, over 250 height uh, almost taller than my 25 story building where i live <laughs> uh, 25 uh, 25 feet uh, wide yeah huge trunk and uh, I had read that they, they were over like 2,000 years old and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I was awestruck. And just as I you know, stood there gazing at the white tree, the park ranger comes and asks me, uh, he says, do, do you know um, how deep is the, is the root system? So I said, oh, that's easy. You know, it must be having a very deep tap root system because it's so, I mean, intuitively, you, you go with that. Mm. Uh, he said, no. He said these roots are go just about six to ten feet deep, right? It, it, it's that shallow. Uh, yet he says, you know, it it can withstand uh, uh, tough storms and, and flooding and earthquakes and and strong winds. Um, I was like, wow, you know, how does that happen? And then he revealed the the underground secret, uh, you know, of the forest. So what he says is the sequoia trees in the roots of the sequoia tree, they, uh, you know, they go outward in search of the other roots of the other neighboring sequoia trees and they reach out and they form a strong bond. They, they, they kind of intertwine with each other and they form mm. a permanent bond. And that is really the secret, right? It's basically uh, how they hold themselves together, hold on to each other and, and looking out for each other, looking out for themselves and for each other. Yes. And uh, so that's co-elevate. Yeah. Simply put, in giving, we receive. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's really inspiring. And it's it's always nice to be able to have, you know, some some sort of story that 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 you can share like that. And I mean, yeah. co-elevating, of course, is is something that is is quite core to the EXO methodology, right? And and even if we look at a process like the sprint process, it yes yes, there's a little bit of competition in that there are teams, mm -hmm. uh, you know, working on their own initiatives. But what you often find is how at the end a lot of those initiatives can actually push each other together, uh, uh, work together, mm -hmm. and and combine. I know that you know you you've uh, run you know been a part of the sprint that was run in India. Are there, are there any sort of lessons that, that you took from that? And, and also, um, before we, we came live, you were speaking a little bit about, you know, about some potential clients, et cetera, and, 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 and what you're doing. So it'd be great if you could share about mm -hmm. that for those people out there saying, you know, what is it that's so good about these sprints that these people are talking about? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so I come to the client, the, the potential, the, the prospect, uh, soon to be client in, in a bit. Uh, but coming back to lessons learned from the sprint, you know, 
uh, many lessons, Kevin. You know, I think we did a lot of things right and, and a lot of, a lot of things that we could, you know, be better at in our next sprint. Um, let me talk about a few here, which might help uh, potential, uh, you know, uh, sprints uh, coming up. Uh, the first one is about, uh, so sprinter selection, uh, you know, I think companies that are going in for sprint uh, should ensure that it's it's not, uh, people don't, don't feel a sense of entitlement, right? Uh, it has to be earned. So basically having a rigor of getting the best people on board, right? Following, following a process, uh, making it coveted, making it aspirational. Uh, you know, that's important because um, this also then buys, you know, locks them in to invest their time because this attention is a scarce commodity. So how do you get them to lock that time, right? So the first thing is printer selection. Uh, the second thing is, you know, forming uh, sprint teams. Now, um, what you know we followed the patrick lencioni model right uh, which is called his, his model is called the widget tool so basically what it helps is it helps you to to uh, um, to form a team which is which is um, well balanced in terms of in terms of ideation in term, in terms of you know uh, uh, enablement and in terms of implementation so uh, applying this tool helped to you know get people of the civil we applied it a little later into the process you know mm -hmm. but i think if we had applied it a bit earlier we could have got the right composition uh, of the teams right so that that's the second one uh, the third one is uh, basically you know um so the third one is to do regular check-ins with the senior management you know at the, you know when you when you're at the stage of sharing and uh, disrupt uh you know uh, again testing and, and at launch stage so basically doing a check-in with the senior management why are we doing this to basically uh, do a mood check and to also break into the immune system to see to it that you're carrying people along you don't want any surprises right uh, so so basically that that's important that's very important uh the another thing that we realize is very important is to have exo ambassadors within the system you know so you create so much of buzz in the system beyond the the teams undergoing the sprint that you you create a buzz so that people feel FOMO, right? People feel, yeah. oh my God, you know, I want to be part of this. It's something big. These guys are up to something. Yeah. So so that's another one. Um, when the sprint finally happens, you know, and you have post sprint initiatives coming up. Uh, I think it's important to have uh, very robust tracking measures for the for the initiatives, right? Uh, because the whole, you don't want this ending up like what they say as an innovation theater. You know, yes. you want to see that this this uh, sprint, the initiatives born of this, out of the sprint really uh, go on to become something big. Right. So having those tracking mechanisms in place, which means even taking them away from the mothership uh, into an in incubator of need be while retaining the umbilical cord to the, to the mothership. Right. So that you can you can leverage the brand strength and the network and whatever else the, the core brand can give you. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's, that's and and, and yeah. ultimately, yeah. so important that those people who come up with the initiative can continue that initiative. What we've seen in, 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 in some sprints, unfortunately, yeah. is, is where people yeah. move back to their job and their yeah. amazing yeah. initiative, someone who, who didn't have the, the foresight, the passion, the, the, all the ideas, try to, try to continue it on, uh, which which can be an issue but sorry i uh, i jumped in there please do continue yeah, no, no, you, no, you're, you're actually leading me to my next point of um you know get them to put skin in the game so what's in it for the sprinters to be you said it you, you know mm. what's in it for them right they're leaving their jobs they're leaving the secure jobs to do this uh, what is the path forward? So lay it out for them it might be equity it might be you know they could possibly the business could become so big uh, that arises out of this initiative that they could have the potential to be a, the CEO leading that, right? Uh, so stuff like that. I mean, th these are some things I think that, that are very uh, critical and important. Uh, what we did well was also expose them to a lot of master classes. You know, uh, we had uh, Alina, people from the EXO community um, who basically, you know, uh, helped widen their thinking and gave them deeper perspective into, into what they were doing. So I think, yeah, all of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've covered the main points. 
awesome. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and and so before we were speaking, you were you were saying that with with a with a potential uh, you know, sprint client, you've 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 been working with them uh, to to build up those ambassadors, essentially, like you just spoke about, right? Yeah. People who are yeah. who are who are fired up for EXO. Can you just share a little bit about about what you're doing there? Yeah. So um, so in our experience, we've seen that you you know leadership can have the the best intent, right? Um, the, the analogy is um, seeds grow in fertile soil. Mm. So how do we ensure that the soil is fertile in the companies uh, that we're that we're going to do the future sprint in, right? Yes. So another lesson learned from from this sprint is uh, to seed that thought, and this is going beyond the awake. We mm. any which ways will do the awake right. as part of the process, but what we kept thinking, what more can we do? Uh, so we came across this, uh, you know, um, Growth Institute in, in partnership with EXO has come up with this whole mini sprint course. Yes. Uh, we thought it yes. would be fantastic to take out five, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you say? Five bright minds from the from the prospect client that we had and immerse them through this mini sprint process so that um, they then go on and become, they understand the process and they ingrain it and they get so immersed in it that they then become our ambassadors internally in their company, yes. uh, right? Uh, and not only that, and Kent is leading that and is doing a good job of you know doing the whole, getting the whole uh, thing together. Um, so that's happening. And what happens therefore? One is the EXO ambassadors. And, and the second thing is that these, these chosen five then go on and become the sponsors uh, of the sprint teams and also become contributing uh, you know uh, members uh, mm. of the teams as well so uh, yeah yeah in fact today uh, after uh, you know as soon as i finish this call i'm hopping onto a call with uh, a q a with salim ismail as part of the cohort the whole cohort is going through a through a group uh, q a with salim yeah that's so that's, that's really there. awesome really really awesome to hear and going to be excited to see how that how that outcome comes about and uh, really really looking forward to that our time has pretty much uh, run to an end and i always love to end off the call just with um you know what is that one thing you'd like to share with folks uh, as we as we say goodbye today uh -huh. um so um no one thing I, i'll i'll say three things if you allow <laughs> yes, okay sure. uh, okay so uh, you know, I think uh, it's so important to uh, to get into this whole space of uh, collaborating rather than competing, right? Uh, and even at White Spaces, we follow a lot of Adam Kahane's work on uh, competing, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, collaborating with the enemy. Uh, mm. So because there's so much, like uh, I mentioned to you uh, before this, that we're, we're getting into some exploratory call with local motors. So we're doing a lot of things. We're tying up. Uh, getting into partnerships with a lot of people who are better than us ahead of the journey and you know where digital transformation is is happening or where there's you know technology uh, um, you know high tech in a high tech uh, you know uh, places or uh, even this whole um, um, yeah these things basically collaborating with people who are better than us so that mm. uh, you know uh, they grow and we grow and again co elevate that's the whole thing the yes. second thing that i want to talk about is is you know it's so important to be driven by uh, you know a passion and purpose which is beyond you uh, because you know uh, there's a different glow on your face right when you're doing stuff driven by a purpose uh, the third thing that i want to give to the community is that uh, being human at work works mm. absolutely 100 percent. zahira it's been wonderful chatting to you i look forward to uh to hearing uh more about how 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 things go with with the sprints i'm also really excited about about uh, i think it's a great time for the community in india there's there just seems to be so much buzz uh coming out of uh, out of different places and really really excited about that uh, enjoy the time uh, with the with the masterclass, and we'll chat to you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure. Bye, bye bye. So great uh, chatting to Zahira. 
Uh, and so important uh, that remember, uh, we are all human and being human is, is really what works. We're going to end off uh, today just with a, a short video uh, about the next book that's coming out. So if you haven't got your copy yet, if you haven't pre-ordered, uh, you can do that today.